Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of miscellaneous news articles, a bit of them strange in nature. We might make this into a new video series, I don't know, we'll see how it turns out. But first on the list, emergency declared near Portland for measles outbreak in an anti-vaccine hotspot. Who would have thought? Health officials in Clark County, Washington have declared public health emergency for a measles outbreak in an area with a high rate of unvaccinated children. As of Tuesday, January 22nd, officials tallied 23 confirmed cases in the county, which is just north of Portland, Oregon. The case count rose rapidly, more than doubling since last week, and will likely continue to rise amid low vaccination levels in the area. And there you have it, folks. Keep your kids vaccinated for measles, huh? Pretty straightforward. And next, we have a CNN Politics article. State Department cancels border security conference due to shutdown over border security. Now, that is technically true. That's how CNN gets away with a lot of things, but I really do appreciate the way they constructed this article's title. In the midst of a partial government shutdown stalemate over a border wall, the State Department has had to cancel for now an international conference focused on border security due to that very shutdown. It took two people to write this article. Uh, really speaks volumes of the talent of writing that is coming out of CNN. And next we have a BBC News article, which is more or less the same quality of news as BuzzFeed. None of these people are much better than one another, to be honest with you. But they have this article about the Daily Mail, demanding that a browser extension their allotted designation. Dailymail.uk Proceed with caution, this website generally fails to maintain basic standards of accuracy and accountability. So the Daily Mail has reached out to NewsGuard, but NewsGuard has said, you know what, we actually tried to reach out to you before. Uh, we reach out to all people we designate as, a, as an inaccurate source, and that would include, as they show here, Sputnik News, the Daily Kos, which is a left-wing political blog, and Infowars. And next, we have a Sky News article, Gang Hunt Sniffer Dog, who has found illegal tobacco worth 6 million British pounds. See this guy right here? He has found 6 million British pounds worth of smuggled tobacco. An elite sniffer dog who has tracked down millions of pounds in illegal tobacco has had a 25,000 British pound bounty put on his head by a criminal gang. Stuart Phillips, who runs specialist detention dog service BWY Canine in Pembrokeshire, has claimed that the success of his trusty Springer Spaniel, Scamp, has spooked smugglers into taking action. What a sentence. During his five-year career, the pooch has sniffed out six million British pounds worth of illegal tobacco thanks to his powerful sense of smell and natural hunting instincts. So they really, they want him gone, which means he has been doing good work. And next, really taking criminal justice to a new level in Canada. Indigenous fishermen found guilty of illegally selling $90 worth of fish after a year-long sting. So over the course of a year, a police officer, an undercover agent, you know, one of these brave individuals that dedicate their life to criminal justice, uh, spent a year buying nine different fish, well, nine of the same type of fish, but nine different fish over the course of a year for $10 a pop. I mean, I haven't seen a, an amazing sting like this since Ruby Ridge. Donald Iron sold 10 bags of fish, excuse me, I said 9, it, is actu it was actually 10 bags of fish to a conservation officer, according to court documents. Let's go ahead and read of this tale of criminal mastermindery. If that's not a word, it is now. A northern Saskatchewan man has been found guilty of illegally selling fish after a prolonged sting operation by conservation officers. Court documents show that conservation officers started investigation into Donald Iron of Canoe Lake, Saskatchewan, after complaints that Iron had allegedly sold fish illegally for 20 years. The investigation led to Iron being convicted this January of three charges of illegally marketing a fish. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Yeah. 
the conservation officer, whose identity is protected through a publication ban, traveled to Canoe Narrows in 2016 posing as a scientist. The officer offered Iron $25 up front and $20 every month after uh, to place fake air quality monitoring equipment in his yard. Iron agreed to the officer's proposal, so they spied on him as well. Court documents show that Iron told the undercover officer that he would have fish for the officer the next time he visited. However, for one reason or another, Iron did not have fish for the officer. Finally, on the officer's trip to Canoe Narrows on February 23rd, 2017, the defendant told the officer that he had a bag of fish for him, court documents read. So he finally came through. Iron gave the undercover officer a bag containing two northern pike fillets and asked for a pack of cigarettes in exchange. The officer instead offered Iron $10 for the fish, which is what Iron told the officer a pack of cigarettes cost, according to court documents. On April 23rd, 2017, Iron gave the officer four bags of walleye. When the officer asked how much Iron wanted for the fish, he asked for $10 a bag. The undercover officer completed similar transactions on May 30th, 2017 and September 18th, 2018 for four bags of Northern Pike and two bags of walleye, respectively. The officer then removed the fake air quality monitoring equipment from Iron's yard. In total, 10 bags of fish were purchased for a total of $90, according to court documents. And really, this, this last bit here is what really sells it. Defense counsel submitted that the undercover officer enticed his illiterate, poor, and allegedly alcoholic client into committing these offenses by waving money in his face. Got him. You know, waving $10 uh, at a time, <laughs> like some sort of fisherman working girl. According to what Iron told the officer, all of the fish were taken from Canoe Lake. Next, we have Taco Bell to dial up hot sauces in Thailand because they're not spicy enough. Check out a little bit of this article. Taco Bell is expanding its considerable fast food empire into Southeast Asia, set to open 40 restaurants in Thailand by 2022. The first restaurant is scheduled to open in January on the 24th, where, quote, flavors and offerings such as tacos and burritos have been tweaked to suit local tastes. That tweaking involves heightening the spice factor for the more heat-accustomed palates in Thailand. What we think is hot and spicy in the U.S. is just starting off in Thailand on the spice scale, so we dialed up the sauces. And apparently the Diablo sauce is a big hit, so hey, if you're ever in Thailand, gotta go and try the hottest sauce they have at Taco Bell. Gotta make that your priority. Go to a fast food restaurant. Go to a third world country to go to a fast food restaurant that's down the street from where you live. Alright, we'll move on. Manitoba driver throws a speeding ticket out the window and instead gets a littering ticket. Well, he gets a littering ticket and a speeding ticket. A Manitoba driver tried to trash their speeding ticket in front of the RCMP officer who gave it to them and then was promptly fined for littering. Here's a, a, a video. They have it provided in the article here. And RCMP Manitoba writes, DYK, did you throw your speeding ticket out the window? You can also be fined an additional $174 for littering under the Highway Traffic Act. Please slow down and drive safe. If you have questions about your ticket, please speak to the officer, who will probably tell you to speak to a judge. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. But that'll be the end for this video. Uh, let me know what you think would be a good name for this series in the comments. I'd like to see what you guys think. I wanted to take a quick moment to shell out my lovely merchandise that you can see on Teespring. Here we have my two newest editions, Ask Me About My Shirt, and also I Probably Don't Like You. Those come in various colors. And then here are more of my lovely artistic contributions to society. And I didn't come up with the ideas originally for all of these, but you have to admit some of these are worth throwing on a t-shirt. Don't believe their lies. I like beer. Communism doesn't work. 
So if you use the code WILD, you will get free shipping. So something to keep in mind. And if you don't want anything tangible but still want to support the channel, I of course still have my Patreon for the time being. And I also stream on Stream Me with The Midnight Show, The Morning Squat, and The Midnight Show X, which should be coming back soon as a Stream Me exclusive, so check me out over there for more streaming, essentially. That's all that's over there, but we have a lot of fun with some of the live streams, so I would encourage you guys to check it out. But with that, and you guys have a good afternoon.